Welcome to another episode of Sailing Yabat where we are rebuilding this big wooden schooner for three and a bit years now. We are on our last stretch to get this boat launched. This could not have happened without the help of our amazing team, which you guys, if you've been watching our episodes, you already know them all. Yesterday, we've managed to test our big windlass for the first time. Very, very cool. Now, I think as there's a lot to do every day and we don't know exactly what we're gonna do every day, let's play a game. Let's take turns saying something that we're gonna do today. And the one who can say the most things wins. However, if we say something that we end up not doing, we're disqualified. Okay. So I'll start and I am going to... Back when I installed this, I thought it was gonna be so unnecessary to have, but with this sun <coughs> and also the rain, it is a massive, massive help. And I can't wait to have these shrouds installed, which is going to be one of my next jobs because it's quite a necessity to have them. I have to confess, I was even quite against this bimini because I thought it looked like Yaba was wearing a silly party hat. But I was wrong because now when I see it from far, I think it looks super nice. And the shade it gives, it's very, very cool. I want to measure how big we want the name of Yaba to be. Okay. Because I might have something in mind for that. Where is it going to go? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. 35 centimeters? Yeah. 33.6. You mean it? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was that much of a perfectionist sometimes. Nice t-shirt. Job one of today, done. So yeah, next thing, let's go. Some adjustments are needed in order for this to fit. So I'm gonna work on this little piece of wood so we can finally have it here. Something like that is the end product that I'm envisioning. I was getting ready to do it, but imagine if I mess up and I ruin all the effort that Ben has put here. So I think I'm gonna ask him to do it. So if he messes up, at least he's messing up his own work and not me. <laughs> so much faster than jigsaw. I always imagine it being done with the whole saw. Now, I think I'm gonna add another layer of varnish, let that dry, and then I can install in place. Oh, that's nice, ne? Is it nice? Good enough? Very beautiful. Okay. There's not many things on this boat that I would like to go back to to redo, but this through hull is one of them. Now, it was installed, I asked a lot of people around here, and everyone just says put the grid forwards here, which makes sense because it kind of scoops in the water. However, this is very low down, and the amount of pressure that gets pushed into this hole is immense, and also the pump inside is sucking in water. I remember when we were, I think we were in Ubatuba, there was a little ship wormhole under our bed and we literally had a fountain inside our boat. So the pressure of the hull in the water is always going to let water in. The reason I don't want it pointing forwards is let's say there is a, any dirt, plastic bag, seaweed, I don't know what, anything that could be floating around in the water can just come here and as the, it's being sucked up, it could just kind of clog it. So if I were to rotate it around, we'd still have all that pressure all that water pressure being pushed inside here, the pump sucking up water, and also there's not gonna be any air bubbles because of that amount of pressure. So I'm gonna just remove this. And it's just a gut feeling, and I think it's really good to listen to these gut feelings. It's been a gut feeling since I've installed it that it's the wrong way, and then peas as well. So I'm gonna take that screw off and do it inside. I'll keep the valve and all that all intact. I'm just gonna take the hose off, take the valve off, uh, and flip this around. We're just gonna go and head into the engine room now, but we've managed to set MP up. He's working with a nice fan over here. MP, is everything okay? 
You got you you filming yourself. Okay. It's so hot in there, so we managed to set this up. Also Nick was getting the last the last paint ready for the bow sprit that isn't the polyurethane paint. So when this is on, just primer and PU. I can't wait to get all those stainless steel rings back on and get that bow sprit ready for sailing. So we're just gonna go into this engine room now, loosen what we need to from the inside, and then uh, Luik actually just came over to see how it's going so he can help out a bit. I can tell you that liquid gasket definitely works. And I wouldn't recommend putting it if you want to remove it anytime soon. But this is coming off. I thought we could maybe drop it, turn it and add more seeker. But it is way better to just take it completely off, clean it all, prep the surfaces and do it again because you don't want to mess with the hole that low down under the water line. Look at that legend. So let's go and have a look at that three hole, see if we can take it off, clean it, flip it, and put it back on. It's quite funny, but because these underwater through holes are the ones we try and put on as hard as possible. And now like they're not supposed to come off easily at all. And this one is now having to come off and I've put so much seeker in there. This is one of those things that I feel like it's going to take absolutely all day, but let's try and get this done. Guess who's saving the day? Wedges. <laughs> so yeah, if you add the seeker like a quarter way up the thread, what else do you expect, you know? So I'm just gonna clean it all off, make this all smooth, give it a good clean. I'm gonna put another layer of epoxy under it as well because that's how strong Seeker is, you see? Or was that a chisel, whatever. I'm gonna just make this all nice again, put it back on and do it correctly. Okay, are you looking at what I am looking at? Can you see what I see? We have light and all quite hidden. So this hole and behind, which I think is very nice. I'm gonna ask Ben to show that so we are in the dark and we see the difference the light makes. Does that make sense? Is that cool? 
What is it? Hi. Hi. I need a favor. What is it? Unfortunately, I have to say bye to the fan because I want you to shut me in here so I am alone in the dark so I can test the light. Ah, <laughs> okay. Bye. She's so dark, I cannot even find the light. Okay. Yeah? No, I couldn't find the light, it was so dark. <laughs> okay, again, bye. Bye. Okay, now I have it. Ready? Guys, I can see everything. Yeah? Hey, leave me in the dark now. Look. With. Without. With. Without. With. And without. And now he's open it. That is so, so cool. How oh, cool. Can we high five to that? I was already on my way. Nice. But how cool is that? <laughs> that saved my life. Anyway, check. Ben absolutely hates lists. And I cannot live without lists. So I really like writing down things I have to do so I can keep track of that and that overwhelms him a lot so it's a lot of effort for him to be here right now but we really want to tell you what's missing for us to finally go to the water we are not expecting to have the boat 100% ready before going to the water but there are some things that we cannot escape from and that's what this list is about okay I'll go first Anodes! Why do you need anodes? We've got that big metal plate behind uh, on the rudder, around the rudder and prop shaft. That needs anodes. And any other places that we need anodes, comment below and we'll add them. We'll add node them. Go. What else is missing under the water line? The anti-fouling. We don't want to go to the water without having our anti-foulings so our boat doesn't get eaten again. Stays, shrouds, stainless steel wires speak for themselves. Anything that holds a mast up or keeps the standing rigging strong. Electric. I'm being quite silly here. I'm putting just one note called electric but actually this folds into a bigger list. We're still missing a couple of things like navigation lights, the weight speed for the alternator, the multiples needs to be uh, connected properly with the 220 for now we just have the 24 anyway the electrolyst is quite big but I like seeing just one paper so it doesn't overwhelm but, me me too I see they're overwhelming right lists <laughs> fuel return our diesel tanks are our diesel tanks are feeding our engine now but we need to have the fuel return that goes from the engine back to the diesel tanks. we need to have that properly for now we just have a, <laughs> a little jerry a, can yeah a prop knife this is something that we have ordered, we just need to wait for it to arrive and install into place so it doesn't really depend on us, but we don't want to go to the water without it. That's the knife that if any rope gets stuck in the propeller, it kind of spins and it cuts the rope itself. Yeah. Transducer! It is in place, but we need to connect it. Yes, and so we cannot get it off yet. And this goes together with probably some NMEA and stuff, so we'll keep that on until it's literally connected to the system. This! I think I wanted to keep this a surprise. But well, it's here anyway. <laughs> we are gonna have. Wait, I dropped one. Uh. <laughs> Underwater lights. I'm so excited about this one. Uh, I used to think it was more of a luxury, but it actually, as we wanna do night dives and it's just for safety, it's gonna be so cool to have them. And it looks very cool. It looks very cool. So you're gonna hate us for that or you're gonna love us for it. And if you hate having underwater lights, we'll just flick them off sometimes for you guys, you know? <laughs> okay, the whole primer actually comes before the anti-fouling, which is the bronze. Uh, just putting that on. That's the bronze coating before the anti-fouling. And I on. think this also is including like preparing the hole for the primer. So all that is in this little paper. 
I have here finished bilge pumps. I think we are extremely close to that. I just am not gonna take that off yet because I'm still missing the uh, waterproof box for all the connections that I want to keep them safe. In the engine room and in the bow locker, we need that gel box and I still haven't put them in place because I still don't have them in hand. But then once that's done, this can be we have It's just one step closer, yeah. like you see, Booch pumps included so many things and now it's just one thing that's keeping me from scratching this, but it's almost ready. We already have four chain plates installed now, all four chain plates of the shrouds of the main mast. We're still missing four chain plates of the foremast before we can start installing all the shrouds. Okay. Grounding. This is something that uh, I think we're still not sure on how to do it. We have a couple of options and we couldn't decide which one we like the most, so it's it's not on standby because we don't have the time for leaving things on standby, but it's kind of on standby until we make up our minds. So yeah, let us know what you think we should do as grounding or lightning deflection, not deflection, but you know what I mean? So do we have a, a copper plate fastened onto the boat? Do we attach it to the engine, which is the prop shaft as grounding or a through bar, a, a, through, a through bolt through the hull? Uh, or a cage with the shrouds, like... Yeah, let us know what you think about that. Anchor! We have the anchor in place, we have the chain, we have the uh, bow roller, we have the windlass. We working. don't have, yeah, we have it all working, except it's still not done. We still need the anchor chain box. And, or is that another thing on your list? I think it just, no, yeah. just Anything. like the anchor is another thing that's almost ready, but it's just missing the, the box, I think. The box, and I think we'll have to check the chain and just give it a nice little clean. Okay. But yeah, it's practically done. The boom. We uh, cannot yeah. live without I think I, it. We're gonna forget that. It is in the ground. We have to remember to at least bring it up the boat and then install it into place. Yeah, the boom. And we can prep it or paint it. or We'll see what we do with that. I have, as next thing, high water alarm. So it's kind of like a flood alarm. So yeah, uh, if, if any of the bilge pumps are not working or if there's more water coming in, then the bilge pumps can pump out. It's an alarm that's higher than that, higher than those switches that tells us you're sinking. So that has to be put in place. You're thinking, it's just, <laughs> or the pump's not turning on when it should, or like you said, it's not enough for the water that's coming in. Get into the bilge, get dirty, figure something out. Exhaust, I think, well, the engine part of the exhaust is ready. We're missing fixing the muffler, and once the muffler is fixed, then we can add the hoses and the flange in the transom that's also missing. Got that then one on already. Good. Fix the muffler which literally just is a bit of a fiberglassing job. What's yours? I have the swimming platform supports. Yeah. So they are the supports that will hold the swimming platform in place. Yeah. They're the first ones we're gonna install. We might incorporate some support and some strength in our davit systems. We might add some chains, some stainless chains, because it is quite a big platform and we want it nice and strong. Next on our list, prop speed. Nothing more to it. It's in uh, paint to paint the prop and it makes your boat speed. <laughs> It shouldn't take long, but we cannot go to water without yeah. it. Uh, you don't have any more. I have one left. Secure fuel tanks. Yes, uh, we have them secured downwards and inwards, but they are not secured upwards and they can still slide forwards and backwards. So we are going to need some straps or brackets and also maybe some rubber cushioning between the tank themselves and the wood. Are you done? I'm done. You've got one more, right? I have one more. This is probably the most difficult one of the whole list. Launch! Splash! Splash! I cannot wait for this one to be done. <laughs> so, this is literally all we have to do. Some of these have some subdivisions. You can see some of them are very fast. Some of them depend on other people. Some of them depend on a lot of work on our behalf. But Some are really far, but some are like this close yeah. of being ripped from here and being ready. So this is just something we wanted to give to you guys. Let us know if there's something that you think we missed, which is also very good, which is good about these daily episodes because you just tell us and then we can like literally just do it straight away. Uh, so comment below what you think, if there's anything to add on to this. Yes, there are lots of things we have to do, like na uh, navigation lights. Oh, that's electric, They're right? inside yeah. electric, okay. yeah. We need all the uh, obligatory lighting, but of course we're gonna launch, we can still work after all this list is done, when we're there, we can do a few more things, which is technically after this, and then we can head over to an anchorage or a mooring buoy and do more stuff, of course. But this is literally to get out of this shipyard. And after this, because we have a lot to do. <laughs> are you guys working hard or hardly working? Mainly you. You hardly working, and you. 
<laughs> he's actually working hard because he's guarding your sleep. No one is sleeping. Who is sleeping? She's also working hard. Okay. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Put it off, see if it comes off. It's just a monitor, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now you can put the monitor on. The wire has to go first. What do you have to say We've done everything we can right now for that through hole. We've just got to wait for it to uh, epoxy to cure and then we need to put the primer on, wait for the primer to dry and so on. So we're just gonna do some other stuff now. And P's doing an amazing job with the servo screen. She is, she's doing a really good job all by herself. I can see if it fits now. Yeah. Nice. I can see you. Hello. Oh. Like a glove. Like a glove. Oh. How cool is that? Is it official? Should I go spend some energy so you can see it happening here? Windows. I'm, I'm gonna go to the windlass and you stay and here. If, is the switch on or off? I'll let you just do it here. Oh, I can do it here. Okay. Yeah. 56 amps. Yeah. Do it longer. Nice. Let me see. I also want to see. Come on. What? Uh, more than 1,000 watts. This is so cool. Did it say the wattage that was being grown as well? Yeah. How much? 1,500. Without weight on the engine. Uh -huh. Okay. Shall we end the episode with a victory? Another Victron! Another I'm Victron keep doing victory! That joke. I'm, I'm waiting. Oh, sorry. Another Victron victory since our batteries <laughs> were born. And hey guys, you have to say goodbye to someone here. Loic's gonna continue his South America trip. It was very nice having him, very good help, very nice company. But freedom's calling, he has to go. <laughs> And I wouldn't be amazed if he ends up back on the boat and hopefully, because he's going to leave some stuff in our house. So when he comes back, the boat might be on the water. Will it? What's your guess? I think it will. It has to, sure. It has to be. Come on. <laughs> anyway, what? thanks for watching and see you. Guess when? Tomorrow. At least we're replacing Louis with something better. <laughs> I do love this though. <laughs> <laughs>